Hello everyone, George here, and we're back at A Night at Georgie's, or my version of FNAF inside of Unity. So let's jump on in. As you noticed, we've moved to version 5.5.0 F3. Now this is interesting. Automatically, the Steam VR launched as soon as uh, Unity launched as well. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, I don't have everything set up at the moment, so nothing's working. Let's uh, hope that doesn't mess with anything. Okay, so what are we going to do today? Well, I plan on implementing this. So here's a video that someone recorded of what occurs. Of course, when the power is out, we have this delay of how long? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So thirteen seconds before this lighting sequence begins. Well, let me turn that down. So thirteen seconds before all this lighting happens, and then I don't want to call it random, but it doesn't quite seem like it goes with the music. Then the power completely goes out. And that was how long? A total of 30 seconds. The entire thing occurred. A final fritz out. Create a sticky note for this. 13 second pause. Silence. And then uh, 28 seconds or 15 seconds of uh, random lights on animatronic. And then we have uh, the end. So we'll do zero to 13. And then this is 15 seconds, which is you know, 13 to 28. And then we have uh, the last bit is say 30, 28 to 30, which is the fritz out. Fritz out lights or whatever you wanna call it. Okay, now we have that information down. So let's uh, make this happen. Uh, so what we're going to need to do is create a game object that is going to be outside the door that will automatically create when necessary. Let's turn lighting back off. So we're just going to grab one of the temp temporary ones that I have right now. And uh, it looks like we really only need the face for this. So we can go ahead and create a, oh, that's a new selection. So we can grab the head of one of these guys and rip it off and uh, work with it, I guess. So let's do, a control D, create a new head. Let's move this out of that character. Completely out of that character, please. Let's see. There we are. Somewhere like there. And collapse all this. There we are. And this too. Let's move this out. Okay, so head. Let's call this instead uh, lights out head. And let's make this a game object. So coming over here, let's do a new folder. Create folder uh, lights out head could put it under power as well uh, I don't have a folder for power looks like I was doing a different method then so let's put this under lights out head make a prefab out of the thing so we can work with it and uh, let's grab it now and move it to where we need to uh, which is going to be somewhere over here now the pivot on this thing is kind of in an impractical location let's turn to global so we can move this easier over here by the door well of course turn this thing off, not make it an actual object at runtime. Um, is this thing being influenced by anything else? So we've got the brows, the cheeks, the jaw. All right, so let's go here and see what happens if we start resetting rotations. There we go. Much better, much better. Okay. Let's work with the center of this object, not the pivot, because the pivot's not helping us out. Let's move it right outside the door. Now, we might have to make this smarter than what we see in the FNAF stuff, meaning um, since you're in the Vive, you might not see this head where it is. So we might need to put two heads on either side, or even one inside the room later on, if this becomes a problem. Some, something we'll have to test and see whether or not it makes sense. So that's right outside the door. Lights out head. We're going to need a script for this guy. So let's go to, I believe, under our power manager. We're going to want to spawn a whole sequence of events that are going to occur. And then we're going to need a coroutine that, of course, makes all this stuff happen. Let's not worry too much yet about integrating it in. Let's just get the code down for making this happen. Let's create a script that's just going to do a coroutine to control everything that's going to happen with the animatronic. So going to our lights out head, right click, create a new C sharp script, and let's call this lights out head go ahead and place it i guess on the lighthouse light okay let's open it up reload all lights out head there it is 
Can I put it now on there? Are you still having problems? Great, okay, now it's working. Diving back in. Now we're gonna need some lights to make this happen. I don't, let's take a look again. How many lights? Is it just one kind of glowing from within and the eyes glow as well? So we might wanna grab the eyes and uh, change the ambient lighting on them or make them incandescent, these guys right here. Ooh, why does that texture look so horrible? Is it really that bad or did it get imported improperly? We'll, we'll deal with all this stuff in time. So I will need access to the eyes shader elements and then we'll be manipulating them. So let's come over here and do, uh, yeah, let's just do game object, not game manager, game object, left eye, uh, game object, right eye. And we're also gonna want a light, at least one. So let's do light, uh, light, let's just call it light. Make these public so I can set them up inside the inspector. Grab these elements here, copy, paste, copy, paste, great. Okay, now we need that coroutine that's gonna set everything up. Uh, we're also gonna to need to store though the materials for the left and right eye because I plan on manipulating them to make them glow in the dark, not relying on the light source itself. So let's make this a private material. Left, uh, is it the same material? Let me take a look. So animatronic eye test, animatronic eye test. Uh, we'll grab both in case we do wanna manipulate them differently. So let's do left, I material and private material right I there we are so we're going to grab them and on start so let's do left I dot get component and we're going to grab the renderer and then let's do dot material Great, and let's save that on out. So left eye material is equal to that. Copy and paste that line, paste it there. Let's do right eye. And we need, we already have the light, so that's fine. So left eye, right eye, we have those two components. We might want to instantiate or initialize the light by setting it to zero at first. We are going to need a sequence that occurs of the flashing of the light but I think that's gonna all be handled in our coroutine, probably. So let's create the coroutine for this. So let's do enumerator, start, power out, sequence. So first, when the sequence starts, we wanna wait those 13 seconds where nothing happens. So let's do a wait on this. Yield, return, new, wait, for seconds and let's put a 13 in there so that's going to pause us and then after that happens we're going to turn on the object and I silly did not make that an object so let's do a public game object head and inside of start we are going to want to make sure that head dot head dot get component renderer dot Enabled is equal to false. So yield return wait. Now we're going to enable it. So it will do the exact opposite of this here. So we'll bring it on. And we're going to turn our light on. Uh, but the light is going to have this sort of random distribution of stuff happening. And rather than make this sequence really complicated, it might be better for us to create a secondary light script and just place it on the light object and have it pulse at random intervals. Um, on its own once this thing becomes activated. Yeah, I think that's what we will do. So let's just enable the light at this point. Light dot equals true. And let's disable the light here. This, uh, let's make a note to ourselves. Start the light script for random pulsing. And start music. And then we wait another 15 seconds. So let's do a yield, return, new, wait for seconds. And inside of that, we're gonna wait 15 seconds of music. And then we're going to do the bzz, bzz, fritz out the lights, which means we need to have access to those lighting elements. Fritz out lights. And that's gonna be uh, a duration of two seconds. And then we're done. Then the game's over with. So we will need access to 
let's see, the only light left in the scene, which is, well, actually, it's, it's not even that light, is it? There's just this ambient light coming from, I have no idea where. It looks like moonlight. I don't know. It does look like just an ambient moonlight. So we should probably add that into our game as well. Um, wow, we're doing a lot of little things for this, aren't we? Let's take the light source that's in the center of the room, uh, duplicate it, move it off. I'm going to call this ambient, ambient moonlight, because that's what it looks like to me. And ambient moonlight is going to be a blue hue. So let's move that over into the blue range. Uh, let's see what we get. It should also be fairly weak in intensity. Well, that's cool. Uh, let's see. Ooh, things are a little bit different now with this version of Unity, it looks like. Currently real-time indirect bounce light. All right, we're not going to do that, so let's turn that off. Let's turn the intensity pretty low. And actually, let's grab this light and just temporarily turn it off so we get an idea of what this one's going to be like. Even that's way too bright. I'm going to bring it down. Let's do soft shadows. Trying to find out what I like, because I do want it to be ever so subtly lit, but not so much. Let's do a four. Let's do four. Ooh, that's really dark. I want it to be lit only enough so that the attention of the user is going to go to the left or to the right when the, the head starts flashing its lights and it starts drawing uh, shadows everywhere. Let's go with that for the moment. So moonlight ambient, save, and collapse that. And we have our head out there, right? Let's turn this back on. Let's turn our... Did I delete that light? I hope... No, no, there it is. Now, we can either put the light source inside the head or outside of the head. I'm kind of not sure what's going to happen when we do this, so let's copy this light source. Let's rename this to uh, Lights Out Head. Uh, flashing Light. Flashing Headlight. Okay, bring this on down. This is a point light, so f framing up on it was a mistake, apparently. And let's just put it inside the head for the moment uh, and see what happens. Turn on actual lighting now. <laughs> That's a mess. And... Yeah, see, it doesn't do something good because of uh, it casting shadows all over the place. So the shadows are soft. I don't even know if we want shadows for something like this. Well, if the eyes lit up, will that match? What do we kind of have? Is it... Definitely in front of the face. It's kind of around the eyes, but still internal because you see the mouth. So what I might do is create more than one light. And what what is the coloring on that? Is that just a flat white? So let's move this into that area. Yeah, let's let's keep it somewhere around there. And if we disable this light and we turn this off. And we get rid of our gizmos. That's kind of cool looking. I actually like that. I think that's going to be notable. All right, so let's turn the door back on. Let's bring the other light back on as well. Should probably start putting all the lights under a sub object so that I know what's going on. Anyway, uh, and really, this light source should be placed under the head. So let's put that under that. So that way, if I adjust the position of the head, I'll also move the light source as well. Okay, so lights out head. Uh, here's a script, so let's start attaching things as they should be attached. Just put the head there, let's find the left eye and the right eye. Where are you? There you are. So there's the eye left. Um, let's do that. Lock it, and eye left, and eye right. And the light itself that's inside of this thing. So let's go flashing headlight. Really, I should move this into another scene and test it on its own, not with the actual game uh, play and everything else going on and make a prefab out of this thing. Let's apply this. Let's go to a new scene. File, new scene. Save, please. And let's go with uh, our prefab of our head. Bring that into the world. Frame up on it. Uh, to really understand what's going on with this, we're probably going to want to... Let's see, let's go to our prefabs. Let's grab... Do I have a prefab of just the level. Just grab the security room and bring that in right around us. There we are. That's something for us to work with at least. Let's delete this directional light and uh, get rid of the sky stuff and the ambient coloring coming from it. So go to our main camera, turn off sky box, solid color. I'm going to make that black. Wonderful. We also need that in here. 
So let's go to Edit, uh, Window, Lighting, and go to Skybox and do Color, and once again set that to be black. And get rid of this Skybox right here. There we are. Now it matches what I'm supposed to be seeing a little bit. Uh, let's save this scene now as doo -doo -doo -doo, scenes. Let's do test underscore headlights. And we still need to grab references and we still need to adjust the ambient level. So before this video is getting pretty long. So before we uh, stop, let's at least make that stuff happen. So within here, we're going to want the left eye and the right eye. You know what? Do they just, are they on? Or are they in time with the lights? No, that's not the right video. They're in time with the lights. So there's going to need to be a script that not only affects the lighting, but also affects the... Actually, that could be another coroutine, couldn't it? Why don't we just make another coroutine that will handle... Eh, I don't want to do a coroutine. I'd rather do an update with a randomization field. Let's do something weird. Let's do something weird. Let's do a private bool is lighting. I don't know, something animatronic lights up is animatronic lit up really is what I should be writing but whatever this is false to start with and the idea is in our update loop I mean we could do it with the coroutine we could do it with a lot of things uh oh we could do it with a while loop inside our coroutine let's just do this for now we can deal with optimization at a later date so let's do if because really, this is a, a bogus if check, since for most of the part, this will never be called, but why not? So if is animatronic, animatronic lights up, then we're going to randomly pulse the lights to be on and off. So we're going to need access to the left eye material and the right eye material. And the right eye material. And of course, the light as well. And within here, we're going to do something where we start affecting objects. Um, we'll get to that in the next video, because I'm not quite sure how I want to handle this, even with this loop right here. I'm already thinking this was a mistake. But since this is the material, let's do get, uh, what is it? Ambient. So let's go to the lights out head. All right, so we're going to select this object, and we are going to move to the material. Within the material, we're going to look for the slot that has to do with ambience, or emission. We're going to go and select the shader, and find the actual property name for it, which is denoted with an underscore first emission under, uh, underscore emission color. We're going to use that as the property for getting a color value from that particular material, and we are going to save it off to a variable. We're going to do the exact same thing for the right material as well. At the moment, they're the same thing, so it shouldn't matter, but you never know. We might change things up, so why not grab both of them and make the changes necessary? Of course, I forgot they need to be strings, so I add the uh, quotes to either side. And once again, I forgot this is uh, C Sharp and not Java, so I need to make sure that my method names are capitalized and not lowercase. Let's grab the light intensity, and for now, just set it to be equal to zero. We'll be dealing with the actual intensity ramp up and ramp down later on. Now, that's really it for this video. It's gone on for long enough. What we're going to do in the following video is, of course, make a function that's going to actually handle um, ramping up and ramping down things. Hope you enjoyed this. See you next time. Bye.